your attention. I want to invite your attention this morning back to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 is the passage of scripture uh, that we want to look at this morning. Hebrews chapter 12. And I want us to look beginning again at verse one. I read verses one and two, but can we just for now go to verse two and let's hear it again. This is what the word of God says, looking unto Jesus, the author, bless you, and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of of the throne of God. Listen again. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for bringing us back into this space. Now, God, as I come to this moment to preach this first message of 2024, I am aware that I cannot do this by myself. And so now I pray, spirit of the living God, would you fall now fresh upon me? Spirit of the living God, would you fall now fresh upon me? Ah, oh, spirit of God, would you come now again and rescue me from me and hide me behind your cross so that your people will hear you and see you in spite of anything I may say or do. But God, if I am so arrogant and conceited, so full of myself, that I know what you said to say, and I know what you said to do, but I don't do it and I don't say it, God, would you get the glory anyway? But to this end, I pray, take now my mind and think your thoughts. Take now my mouth and speak with anointing your words. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody who agreed to say it. Amen. Would you do me a favor? And even if you got to yell across the room at somebody, look at somebody and recite my title with them and tell them, you got to earn it. Now y'all say it like it tastes good. Say, you got to earn it. Um, Denise knows that one of the movies that we really enjoyed a long time ago that came out in 2006 was a, a Christian-based movie called Facing the Giants. Have any of y'all ever seen that movie? Y'all ain't seen that movie. Y'all, y'all got the it's a it's about a it's a football team. It's coached by this guy by the name of Grant Taylor. And he's trying to lead his 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 students uh to the point of excellence that will result in winning. Stay with me this morning. They are making preparations in this one scene uh to face Westbrook. And Westbrook is considered to be the most dominant team in the league. Brock Kelly, if you saw the movie, or you go watch the movie, Brock Kelly is the starting defensive tackle. Um, and he says that Westbrook is much stronger than them. And he says uh, that, he said, if I knew we could win, then I would believe that we could win. So Coach Taylor decides that he's going to call him out and he challenges him to do the death crawl. Now, brothers, I need to ask y'all, did any of y'all play football and know what a death crawl is? Uh, if y'all don't, yeah, you know, okay, good. So let me tell you what, for those of y'all who don't know, the death crawl means you get on the goal line and you get up on your toes, your legs off the ground, and you get on your arms and you start literally crawling as far as you can. Well, Miss Cliff, if that's not bad enough, what Coach Taylor does is he blindfolds him. And when he blindfolds him, he said, not only am I going to blindfold you, stay with me. He likewise says to him, I'm going to put Jeremy on your back. Now, for those of y'all that didn't see the movie, Jeremy is 160 pounds. Now he has to back crawl with Jeremy on his back. He's doing the death crawl, rather, with Jeremy 160 pounds on his back. And Alexis, he now has to do it blindfolded. Why did he blindfold him? He blindfolded him because he said, I don't want you looking at your distance. I don't want you looking at how far you made it. Here's what he said. He said, I want you to give it everything you got. He said, you can negotiate with your body for more strength, but don't you quit until you have nothing left. I, I love it because as they were going through it, he gets to the 30, he gets to the 50. He starts to say, I ain't got no more strength. And all of a sudden, Coach Taylor said, Brock, I know you got some more. I know you can. He said, 10 more steps, five more steps. And all of a sudden, Brock collapsed. When Brock collapses, he said, Coach, I know I had to at least make it to the 50. 
And then the coach removes his blindfold and he says, Brock, look up. You in the end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will hear me this morning because I got a real simple message for us. The scene speaks expressly to give us an admonition that if we're going to be disciples of Jesus Christ, I need you to help me preach right quick and just say, I want to be a disciple. But if we're going to be a disciple, it requires endurance. It requires for us to have an endurance as we walk by faith. Let everybody say faith. Ladies and gentlemen, faith is the core of our beliefs that Jesus is the Christ, that he died on the cross, that he got up from the grave and that one day he's going to come back. But it's more than that here. Y'all hear me this morning. It's more than that. Here in this text that we read, Miss Cliff, faith here has to do with more than believing. Rather, it is about the life that we live in which we specifically show our commitment, sacrifice, and focus for Jesus Christ. You, you know, we like to tell people, Elijah, we like to tell people, Alexis, we like to tell people, saints, that we are Christians. We like to regularly attest to, of our allegiance to God through Jesus Christ. But the writer of Hebrews is challenging us to move our faith beyond our words and back up our words with our walk. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go here in just a minute. Uh, do me a favor and look at somebody and say, you got to walk it out. Yeah, you got to walk it out. That's all right. Y'all y'all just saw the video. Y'all know, know what I'm referring to. But you got to, for real, you got to walk out. He, what are you trying to tell us? You got to put some walk to your words. So it's important before I get too far into this um, that I clear the air because let me be real clear. I, I'm not this morning uh, talking about some works righteousness. I'm not talking about us living right in such a way that we earn salvation. Uh, in fact, Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10 says this. It's by grace that you've been saved. You received it through faith. It was not our plan or our effort. It's God's gift, pure and simple. Listen, I need you to say it out loud. Said the only reason I'm saved is because God saved me. Say I didn't earn it, I didn't buy it, and I don't deserve it. But I'm saved because God did it. I hear y'all. It sounds to me like I got some saved folk in there. God saved. God cleaned us. God redeemed us. Oh, bless his name. God did it. But now that we are the recipients, are y'all still listening? But now that we are the recipients of God's salvation, God expects us to run the race of faith. Let me say it again. Now that we are the recipients of God's salvation, God expects us to run the race of faith. If you didn't close your Bible, look at it. Watch what he said. Listen at it again. He says, so since we stand surrounded by all those who have gone before, an enormous cloud of witnesses, let us drop every weight and the sin that clings to us and let us run with endurance the long race that is set before us. Now, did you hear it? Or did I read it too fast? Did you hear it, V? Let me, let me say it again. Denise, listen again at what he said. He said, let us drop every weight and every sin that cleans us. Hold on. I thought you just told me, I just told you, you just said back to me, God cleans. I thought I just said, you just said that God did all of this. But now it shifts from what God did for us. To what we supposed to do for us. Now, come on, I need y'all to stay with me because watch what he says. He says, literally, if you're going to run the race, you got to get rid of the weights. Now, do I have any folk in here who ran track? Any in track runners in here? What y'all run? Tell me, what y'all ran? What y'all run? What you run? Which race? Oh, you feel it? Okay, okay, man, I got you. I got you. I couldn't jump and I couldn't throw, so, you know, whatever. 
Couldn't do none of that. I, listen, my brother, my brother, my brother was a hot jumper. He was at that time maybe five foot two, if that tall. But he jumped seven foot. He, I mean, he could do what you what you do. Oh, you hot jumper. I can't stand y'all. Because listen, I, I had no bunnies, none, none. Do it. Oh, you ran the hundred and two hundred. Anybody else in there run the sprints? You you ran the can you run? Get for it. But don't make me bring my shoes. Can you can you run? Now I'm supposed to be retired. Listen, I'm listen, listen, I'm gonna do like Cat Williams. I'm better than everybody. It, did, did you, I'm sorry, that wasn't even supposed to come up in my sermon. I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Cats have become for me. Let me let me stop. But 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 so so here's the thing though. If you ran, if you ran, and even even if you high jump, let me tell you what you know. You do not go down to the high jump ring. You don't go down there to, to, to that space or go over there to the track and get ready to run and keep your sweatsuit on. Right? When you get ready to go to participate in your event, you're going to strip down. So when you get ready to jump or you get ready to run or whatever you do, you're going to have on the lightest shirt possible, the, the, <laughs> the smallest shorts you can put on and keep on. Then you're going to have on some cleats, some, some, uh, some, what them things are spikes? Yeah, that's what they call it. I'm thinking football. But spikes and hold on time. Come on, be honest. You ain't got no socks on. What, watch what, watch what the athletes in track and field know that if I have too much on, it creates a resistance. And because I have the resistance, I, I now cannot perform at optimum level. If you are listening to me and you have not tapped out, here's what this writer is saying to us. He is challenging us to discipline ourselves. Let the church say discipline ourselves. Now say it like it tastes good. Say discipline ourselves. He said, you and I have to discipline ourselves by choosing to lay aside weight and choosing to lay aside sin. This is the wrong sermon to preach to me. I should have picked a sermon that's going to make everybody happy and make us feel good and encourage us. But this is encouraging because if we want to be better, we got to do better. Watch what he said. got to lay, lay aside the weight, but it's interesting. He said you got to lay aside the stuff that's slowing you down. Um, he ties it, if you ain't close your Bible, to sins. Watch Miss Cliff what he said, like the lust of the eyes. Oh, come on, come on, come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. How in control are we of our eyes? Uh, he talks about stuff like what we say with our mouth. Um, he's talking about stuff like uh, the arrogance and the pride in our lives. Because while everybody may tell you, child, just live your best life, here's what this writer is saying. He said it's a weight that's slowing you down so that you can't run your best faith race. God, is anybody listening to me? He said, he said, so you got to get rid of it. But what, what, what do you mean? Weights of uh, needing affirmation and needing the approval of others so much so that we begin to blend in, to assimilate and participate. Am I preaching to anybody in here? The, the, the question is, what, what are we wearing? He said, we got to lay aside, we got to discipline ourselves to put it aside and to take it, oh, please hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. God ain't going to take it off for you. Okay, I hope y'all listening. What, what he literally is saying to us, us Miss Cliff, God will save you, but God won't make you a disciple. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus and you want to grow in your faith, there are some things you and I have got to do. Do me a favor and just tell somebody, say, you got to take it off. But, but watch what he says. He says, he says, take the weight off and the sin that easily besets us. Are y'all looking at your Bible, the sin that easily besets us? Watch what he said. He said, sin is all around you. And the reason the sin so easily attaches itself to us, Alexis, is because we can't run fast enough to prevent it. Because we're weighted down with stuff that is not equivalent to discipleship. Are y'all hearing me? So watch what he says. He says we're now weighted down, which means we're slowed down. 
We're weighted down, so we can't run real fast. We're weighted down, so we cannot really make progress. And because we're not making progress, we now retard our own discipleship development. So now what happens? We now become victimized by the sin that besets us. Okay, can I teach Bible right quick? Y'all, somebody said teach pastor. Let me teach Bible right quick. Because Miss Carr, watch what he literally is saying. I know we want to talk about adultery and we want to talk about going to parties and we want to talk about drinking and we want to talk. Watch what he literally is talking about in this text. When you study this Greek text, he is pointing to a word called apostasy. Let the church say apostasy. Apostasy is a real brilliant theological term that simply means I become disloyal to the faith. Y'all ain't listening to me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I become disloyal. Denise, literally what he said, he said, I've been compromising because I'm carrying the weights. And because I'm compromising, now all of a sudden I get to the point to where I'm engaged in an apostasy because now I start wavering and questioning what's right or wrong. A lot of we were talking about that. Now all of a sudden I start, I become more interested in the rules of humans than the commandments of God. And now I'd rather please humans rather than to please God. And now I become comfortable with swag and surfing and walking it out in the church and playing the music of the world in the church. And we become comfortable adjusting the church to the standards of the culture rather than adjusting the culture to the standards of the church. I ain't got no help in the church. We have got, ladies and gentlemen, he said, because now we begin to engage in apostasy. Be because, because we didn't get rid of our own weights. Um, but here's what he says, because I got to quit now. We are people of faith. Here it is, if you don't remember nothing else. But you don't qualify to call yourself a person of faith until you earn the designation. Let me say it again. We are people of faith because we believed in Jesus. But you don't deserve it, that to be calling yourself a person of faith until you earn the designation. Somebody say you got to earn it. So now watch what he does. And, I, and I'll stop here. Watch what he says. So to push it, look what he does in Hebrews 11. He begins to point back to the cadre of individuals in Hebrews 11 that are faith walkers. People who earned it. He talks about people like Abel and Enoch and Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and the children of Israel and Gideon and Barak and Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel and Rahab. Listen, all of these people discipline themselves to earn the designation as people of faith. Can I say something to us? They were people who disciplined themselves. But look back at the list. One now, one of them perfect. Okay. I said you got to lay aside the weight. And we got to lay aside this arrogance that caused us to begin to believe that we're better than them. And that we're above some stuff. Miss Jackson, here's what he's trying to tell us in this text. He's simply saying to us, look back at these people. There were liars in the group. There were prostitutes in the group. There were murderers in the group. There was adulterers in the group. But they decided that they were going to lay aside some things so that they could be faithful to their God. So watch what text says. Text says, Miss Carr, that he then moves us. If you didn't close your Bible, he moves us then, Denise. He says, I want you to glance at them for encouragement because they made it. But then watch what he does. He says, but you need to focus on Jesus. Y'all help me preach one more time and just say focus on Jesus. Watch what he said. He said, put your focus upon Jesus, looking under Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Because Jesus was disciplined. Hear me again. Jesus was disciplined. And so then, Denise, what he says is, if we will look at what Jesus did and look at who Jesus was, then we can figure out what we need to do and we can become disciplined too. Can I finish this when I tell you? Watch what he said. Look at the text. Who 
for the joy that was set before him. Somebody say out loud, said Jesus began with the end in mind. Say it again, Jesus began with the end in mind. His end goal, watch it in the text, was to sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. Mr. Jackson, he came from God to become human, Philippians 2 said. Humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But his end goal was to get there. But hold on, if we're not careful, that sounds too egotistic. That sounds too arrogant. His end goal, in short, was to please God. I need y'all to help me preach this one more time. Say, so I just want to please God. Please hear me. His end goal was to please God. Now, I don't know how many of y'all are going to take this with you. How many of us are going to walk out of here? Man, that preacher show helped me this morning. But I'm telling you, if you don't hear nothing else, you and I, if we're going to be disciples of Jesus, the reason we discipline ourselves is because I want to please God. Folk are going to talk. I'm going to say that in just a minute. Folk are going to say what they are going to say. But the question is, when I stand before God, did I please God? And Jesus lived his life to please God. This is the goal of being a disciple, to represent the king. The goal is to please God. The goal is to press toward the mark. For the upward call of God that is in Christ Jesus. But now let me get to the heart of the matter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, he has this goal in mind to sit at the right hand of God. But God don't just take him and put him there. He got to earn his way there. Go read your Bible. I know, Mr. Jackson, when I told my pastor this at first, he said, man, you almost sound like you almost sound like you're being heretical. No, I'm not. Read your Bible. Who for the joy that was set before him? Watch what the next part of it said. He endured the cross. Look at it. Despising the shame. Let, let watch what he does because he's teaching us something. He now makes the bold choice of disciplined endurance. He makes the bold choice. Somebody say it out loud. Say, Jesus made a bold choice to of discipline, endurance. Watch what it says. He endured the cross. Let me tell you what that really means, Miss Cliff. He chose to die. Y'all are not hearing what I'm saying. He chose the cross. He chose the nails. He chose the beating. He chose to carry the cross. In fact, Listen at what he said in John 10. Ain't nobody taking my life from me. But I lay it down. I got the power to lay it down. And I can take it up again. Okay, that one didn't get y'all. Matthew 26, watch what he said. He said, man, listen, I can call my father right now. He'll send me more than 10 legions of angels that'll come down here and get me out of this stuff. Y'all ain't killing me because you killing me. I'm doing this because I want to do it. Now I got a question for you. If Jesus carried his cross. And you and I say it, we want to be a disciple of Jesus. Okay. Hold up. The Bible said, if anyone is going to be my disciple, they must take up their cross and follow me. I This wasn't even in my message, Miss Cliff. But can I explain real quick how you know if you are carrying the cross? Remember early in this sermon, Alexis, I talked about laying aside weight and I talked about avoiding the sin that so so easily beset us. Here's what happened to Jesus on the cross. His flesh died. Ain't got no help in the Lord's church. His flesh died. Here's my question. If your flesh this weekend is in control of you, you likely have not picked up your cross. Ain't got no help in the Lord's church. If you listen, if you can't never say no to your temptation, if you can't, why is y'all looking at me the way y'all looking at me? If you if you are always led 
by your lust of the eyes, of the lust of your hand, of the lust of your heart, then it is very likely you have not yet picked up your cross. But do me a favor and tell somebody to say, take up your cross. Take up your cross. Take, 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 take it up and choose to care. Because if we don't carry our cross, watch, 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 there was a song, Miss Cliff. I ain't did this a long time, but there was a song we sang. The Cartier Missionary Baptist Church, 1602 Rose Street, Texas County, Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. We, we sang this song, said, Must Jesus battle cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And there is a cross for me. Listen, I'm trying to be as simple as I can. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, young people, listen to me. If you want to be a Christian, being a Christian ain't about confession. Being a Christian is about cross care. Cross carrying is supposed to change. It's supposed, it's supposed to, but watch what the text says. Text says, he didn't just endure the cross. But now listen to me, and I'm finished for real. He endured the condemnation. Um, let me ask you a question. Have any of y'all ever been doing the right stuff and had folk talking about you while you were doing the right stuff? Okay, I got one person shaking their head. Let me see if I can get two more, y'all. Um, let me let me let me let me put it this here way. Let me put it this way. You doing the right stuff, and all of a sudden they start saying stuff like, "Oh, you think you better than everybody?" Okay, I see. I got one more. Uh, let me see. Uh, you doing the right stuff, and all of a sudden they start telling me, "Girl, girl, you don't know that you ain't no fun. Girl, it ain't gonna hurt you to. You, you know what it is? It's condemnation." That's designed to get you into condemnation. Because if, if we be honest, it wasn't in my sermon, but if we be honest, you go do it and then guilt comes with it. Because something on the inside of you is telling you this ain't what you're supposed to be doing. And so now the weight slows you down and you're beset by the sin that has attached itself to you. But watch what Jesus said. <laughs> He said, Denise, talk if you want. Condemn me if you want. Um, say what you want. And that's what he said to us, let them talk. Do y'all know something? Uh, y'all do know they're going to talk anyway. Yeah, you do, you do know they're going to, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. They're going to all, they going to always have something to say. Cause that's all they got is their mouth. So they gonna always have something to say. So here's my question. If they gonna talk anyway, wouldn't you prefer that they be saying, that girl show love everybody? Ooh, that girl show this forgiving. Man, that dude is strong in compassion. He, he be trying to help everybody. Wouldn't you prefer, man, I can't, I, what you know about him? Man, I don't know nothing about him. Man, he was at the party with us, but dude, how many drinks did he have? You come think about it. I don't remember him. I ain't got no help in the Lord's church, Denise, but I don't remember him drinking nothing. They ain't gonna talk. Let me tell you why you gotta do it. Miss Cliff, because our job is to endure the condemnation while we let our light so shine watch before people that they will see our good works and glorify the father that's in heaven all right i'll quit he, he literally says this he starts off with the beginning with the end in mind he endures because he disciplines himself. Then look at the last part of the text. It says, and now he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Here's what I want to encourage you with. As we try to make this journey together, I'm trying to discipline myself in some areas. It's not easy. It's not easy. Because trust me when I tell you, just like y'all got y'all areas where y'all got to grow in, hear me when I say, don't respond too much. Hear, hear me when I say, I got some areas that I, you're not saying no, then listen, I got some area that I need to, I need to go. First of all, don't be talking about all we know, the, the, the devil. So, 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 but listen, I got some areas I got to grow. This ain't just for you. 
This is for all of us. Are y'all even hearing what I'm saying this morning? But here's what I'm trying to tell you. Discipline will work. Do me a favor, please, and just say it out loud one more time. Say, discipline will work. When he finished disciplining himself, Mr. Jackson, it said he sat down at the right hand of God the Father. Now, I'm through with the sermon, but let me, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you, and I'm, I'm through. Um, so that we will know that discipline will work. I skipped over it. I mentioned it, but I mentioned it. I mentioned it very quickly at the beginning. Did you see for Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1? He said, because we are, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Listen to what he said. All of these people testify that if you be disciplined in your faith, discipline is going to work. Abraham testifies. When God tells you leave home and go in the direction I send you, if you just start walking, I'll take you to a land that flows with milk and honey. Do, do y'all hear me? Rahab testifies. No matter what you've done in your past, if you will be disciplined to do something, to do that is the will of God, God will save your family. The children of Israel testify that if when God tells you to do something that sounds stupid, walk around the walls of Jericho six, day, six days in a row, walk around for one time a day. But on the seventh day, I want you to walk around this mug seven times. He said, and when you walk around the seventh time, I want you to shout and I want you to holler. They testify, if you be disciplined, the walls will come down. My final word to you this morning is 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of God because your labor is not in vain. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. We're going to pray. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, and we're going to pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, and we're going to pray. I want to pray for those this morning. I want to pray for those who you know that you struggle some way, sometimes with just simply trying to live the saved. And it's not easy for you. You really struggle with it. Being different is not easy. I've been preaching since I was 10 years old. It's not easy to be different. It's not easy at all. It's not easy. It's not easy when folk put you in a, on a pedestal. And that's what happened to us sometimes. When we decide that we're going to live for Jesus, you hear stuff like, well, he ain't no real Christian. Because if he was a real Christian, he wouldn't. And then they start naming. Him. But may I tell you, today be encouraged. I want to give this invitation right now. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Every heart is praying. If you're here today and you said, Pastor, this is the reality. I want to begin my semester making a commitment to be a disciplined disciple. I'm not going to be perfect, but I want to be disciplined. And I need somebody to pray for me. If that's you this morning, I'm not asking you to come to the altar this morning. I'm just asking you to raise your hand. We're going to pray. If that's you and you say, I need this prayer, I see you. If there anybody else, I see you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much that you are a good and a gracious God. Here's what your word says. A broken and contrite spirit, I will in no wise cast out. So God, as we come in this morning, moment, we pray in the name of Jesus, spirit of the living God. Would you first and foremost help us to forgive ourselves for the places where we've fallen short. I'm not asking you to forgive us because you already have. But that unforgiveness of ourselves can become a weight that causes us to fall prey to the sin 
that easily besets us. So God, would you, I'm asking you, we're asking you, help us to forgive ourselves that no matter what we've done, it's under the blood. It's under the blood. It's covered by your love. Your love covers a multitude of sin. So God, today, would you now cause us to attach to the spirit of God to the point where literally the spirit causes the word to become a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. And now God, as we make this journey, we didn't say it would be easy, but we trust you that it will be worth it. Because at the end of the day, we want to please you in Jesus' name. And everybody who agreed said, amen. Would you clap your hands now and give God a word? I want to, would you, yours, one of y'all help me? We, we want to give our communion this morning as we normally would. Um, we want to give the communion as we normally would on a Sunday morning. This is a part of the faith practice. Uh, of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ that each and every time that we come together um, the only reason I don't do it on Tuesday because it just be so many people in the chapel that to be honest with you um, trying to get the communion set up every week is a little bit of a challenge but traditionally the Christian Church Disciples of Christ every time we come together we give the communion if you get it hold it in your hand and we're going to go ahead and open it up and we're going to get ready to, to partake of this Lord's Supper We're going to partake of this Lord's Supper together. I'm honored that we can take of this Lord's Supper together on this first day of this, this first Sunday, rather, of this new year. I don't feel no waste time. Come too far where I started from. I hope you I hope you remember this. Nobody told me the road would be easier. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave. Let me say this one more time and we'll take it. I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy and I don't believe he brought me this from to leave. Listen, the Bible says on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and would break it. When Paul explains this, he says a couple of things that I think is important each time we do this. He said, first, you ought to examine yourself. What he's really talking about is our relationship with other people. I know we have laughed about the Cat Williams video. People are going back and forth about it. Here's my issue for Cat Williams and any of the others. He said the name of God. Not sure what God he talked about. For those who paid attention, he had something representing Buddhism on his chest. I don't know what God he talked about, but still. Point is, ladies and gentlemen, he, read, he named the name of God. Here's my question. How can you say you love God whom you've never seen? But you hate your brother or your sister you see every day? Don't matter whether he was right or wrong. If they wronged him, they need to repent. But two wrongs ain't never made it right. You and I have to examine ourselves to say, are we really in right relationship with God? When we bow now, God, our prayer now is that you will cause our hearts to be made right. And if there be someone or some people against whom we are holding grudges, would you cause us, oh God, to forgive them as you have forgiven us? 
so that we can take this in a worthy fashion in Jesus' name. Second thing he said was, when you do it, remember that this represents the new covenant in our blood. Now take the bread and eat it. Time to buy some new communion. All right, second, second thing. He said, now take up this juice, which represents the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and drink all of it. While you remain on your feet, let me say thank you so much for coming to church this morning. I hope that the word of God was a blessing to you this morning. I'm looking forward to Tuesday uh, at chapel. Please remember that you will sign in and then you will initial out. Uh, please note uh, that we're doing this because Jarvis, we believe, thank you. We believe that we have the responsibility to educate the head, the heart, and the hand. I want to be clear to those persons who are not Christians who are going to come later. Please note that I'm not trying to make you be a Christian. Neither is Jarvis trying to make you be a Christian. That ain't what we're trying to do. But we do believe that you are a spirit and you, we have the responsibility to help us to develop in our faith. So Tuesday, we're looking forward to seeing everybody at 11 o'clock. Evangelist Kayla Jarson is going to be our, our preacher for Tuesday. And I believe the choir is going to sing it. If not, then we're going to grab some solos or something and roll with it, okay? Y'all were together all last semester. Ain't nothing changed. Just grab one of them songs. Y'all sang 12 times last semester and let's go sing it. All right. I'm just, I'm playing. All right. Receive now this benediction. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you God's peace in your labor, in your leisure, in your laughter, in your tears, in your joys, as well as in your sorrows. May the love of God go with you every step of your journey. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Um, no, Rusty. Also, Josh just said yes. About Wednesday. Yes. Okay. So, so just keep it. Up. You sound so dis. You sound so disappointed. I am disappointed in the fact that the president has yet to address his association. Well, he just got back yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Well, well, I know you're thinking, but we got that whole group text message. It's my point where the question was asked multiple times. He got that whole group text message. What's up, boy? Yeah. What's up, baby? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they'll they'll get it. Yeah, just just drop it there. Thank you, man, for coming. Girl, did you pass my phone? I'm asking for real. Did you pass? I don't remember. Let me look. Hey, man. How you doing? Good, good. I'm good. What's going on? This Wednesday. So now, don't you go nowhere? Uh huh. I've got so much going on. I'll start next Wednesday. Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, sounds good. Okay, sounds good.